Hello, everybody, and welcome to week 12 of Camping Corner. Mallory here with... Tony. Great to be back again for another week, week 12. Week 12. We, we have not been canceled yet. <laughs> no. That's, that's no. better. That's uh, a few more episodes than the, than the Tiger King. Ooh, yes. That was only true. seven episodes. Eight, if you count that goofy thing that they added the other day. So, oh, yeah, the... Yeah, where where are they now? Yeah, that thing. That you. means we are more popular I don't know. than the Tiger King. I don't know that we can go that far yet. Oh no, I'm we're I'm, we're getting there. We are full on full <laughs> on, full in. We are it. <laughs> All right. So to start this week with what's the buzz? Absolutely. Some super cool things out there. Yeah, so we asked what your favorite camping recipes were. Um, definitely got some neat ideas on this one. So things like big pot of beef stew, that's always really good in fall, right? Like fall camping, making any super stew over the campfire. Yeah. Uh, we have some good friends that Barry does everything in cast iron pots on the, on the mm -hmm. fire. Yeah. And from cornbread to stew and meat and things like that. Barry does an amazing job doing that kind of stuff. I love camping with Barry and Melissa, so they always have great stuff. And then the other one, and we've actually done this before, using Reese cups instead of Hershey bars on your s'more. Really, you can use a lot of other candy. There's a whole recipe list that I've yeah. seen pop up on Reddit or one of one of the interwebs about different stuff like that, and mm -hmm. using turtles. Uh, Rolos. I like the at the holidays. You ever have those uh, pretzels with a melted Rolo on top of them? Yes. So you can do that. You do the same thing with the graham cracker and, and the marshmallow. Yeah. And do it that way. Yeah. No, that way you have an idea. assortment of candy for us fat people to eat at the campground. Because you know, you, I, let's face it. You start off and the first three s'mores. Yeah. You make legit. Right. And then at some point, well, just a marshmallow. <laughs> then it's oh, just a piece of the Hershey bar. Yeah. And then I'm going to have a graham cracker. And you just make them. It's like a side down margaritas. You just make them as you go. You just, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Spice it up as you go. But lots no, of, that's a great idea. And lots of people talk about hobos. I, I don't I don't know if they have a different name. But hobos seems to be the most common thing mm -hmm. that everybody loves at the campground. Yeah. Which is absolutely fantastic. So if you have a strange or odd hobo uh, recipe. I know people that have done it with fish. Um, people that have done it with shrimp. You know anything like that. You know, or I'm dying to find some great, easy Cajun style recipes that I can do at the campground. We had gator. We had gator bites yesterday from. Uh, can't think of the name of the restaurant in Winchester. Uh, Indiana. We made a trip up there and got gator bites. Okay. But I, I'd like to have a really good set of recipes for some good Cajun food that I can do at the campground. So if anybody at home has some of those great recipes, make sure you send those in. And if you want to maybe sometime swing by the campground and drop off a sample, that's great too. <laughs> You'll have to let them know your campsite once. Uh, well, you can't miss me, and I'll smell the Cajun food. <laughs> I love boudin and etouffee and things like that. Yeah. I'm not brave enough to make it, though. Okay. All right. So next one. This one's interesting, right? kind of don't get it. So we found this, and we'll kind of take an opportunity to talk about the picture. What do you think? So so two things that I see on this. So number, number one, I can't. Mm -hmm. Number two, I ride a motorcycle. Yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't just do a toy hauler. Right, because when you're taking away the slide, right, you're taking away a lot of that extra space. And some people are fine with a camper without a slide, but a lot of people want that slide, that extra room. So now you're taking up that room with the motorcycle. I'm also sketchy on the weight. Yeah. So, so that bike, uh, for instance, in that picture, that the that particular bike is a uh, Harley Davidson Road King, mm -hmm. which is going to come in at about eight, eight to nine hundred pounds. Yeah. That's an awful lot of weight to put just on the slide. You yeah. Know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not my, not my gig, but I think I would rather have a toy hauler because then you can have the rear patio. 
Yes. You have that big screen room that, yes. that you can pull down or close and the ramp doors and all that crazy stuff. All that great stuff that you can do. That just seems like an odd conversion to me. I would have to agree on that one for sure. So there was a great, we, we had some great trivia this week, and I thought it was super interesting, especially with everything going on and the craziness going on in the world right mm -hmm. now. We had some trivia. So according to, the, uh, to a KOA study, what percentage of teens would be happy to unplug for a camping trip? I think people would actually be shocked with this answer, that it is actually A, 71%. 71%. That, that's amazing. My 13-year-old loves to go camping. Mm -hmm. Doesn't complain that his phone doesn't work all the time. Right. You know, anything like that. He really, at night, before he goes to bed, I think he probably plays on his phone and stuff like that. But for the most part, I think he's pretty cool with just hanging out at the campground and going swimming and hanging out with people. I also love, in that picture, that they, they made a, like a water slide out of a tarp. We've done, I've done that before. Put a little dish soap on yes. there and a little oh, water. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> and for you, it, then you can, it, it serves two purposes. You're taking your daily bath <laughs> with this soap and water while, while you're, you're having fun. It's the cleanest fun exper or experience you can have, it, right? It, that most certainly. <laughs> until there's a mud puddle at the bottom of it. Yeah. And you're getting clean coming down and then sliding through the mud. Right into the mud. <laughs> so the other one that was pretty interesting, U.S. Route 20 is the longest road in America. Yep. Which I was surprised. I, I figured Route 66 was. Yeah. But apparently it's not. Route 20 is the longest road in America. How long is it? D, 3,365. That's a long way. That is. Someone posted that it's called the Road of Sorrow or something like that. I'll have to huh. look it back up again. And I meant to Google that to find out what that meant exactly. Yeah. But I didn't get a chance to. Maybe it's because it's so long and it goes through a lot of boring states. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. Well, yeah, Road of Sorrow or is it tied to the Trail of Tears? Like, is that like the the the, the route that the wagon trains took going out west? Original. I don't know, maybe. Maybe we get somebody to comment down below if yeah. they know yeah. or send us a link to why it's called that. The yeah. information you've got would be awesome. But Dan has been in a lot of different states, so he doesn't mean boring state or boring areas that you've went through. Just maybe not the most exciting places. Well, let's admit Indiana's one of those, right? It, it can be kind of boring. Or Indiana is not exciting to drive through. No. No. And no. I don't think you could say that about like Iowa or some of those others like that, where it's just flat plains. I yeah. mean, it's okay for a while, but when you're doing 12, 14 hours across it, like, no. Hey, look, there's wheat. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we going to see in an hour and a half? Wheat. wheat. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. We got it. So here's a little bit of trivia, a new trivia question, mm -hmm. since apparently I'm reading all the trivia questions and you're just the smart one with all the answers. In what year was the first motorized RV built? So let us know what you think. And Would it be A, 1943, B, 1964, C, 1894, or D, 1910? We'll have to let you know later. We're not going to give you the answer before you comment, right? Absolutely. So, so comment in the section below. Let us know what you think. We'll ask John Stout. He was he probably <laughs> sold that unit the first time. For those of you that don't know John Stout, wonderful guy. Been in the RV industry for 196 years. We love John. Sold the first Conestoga <laughs> wagon to the 49ers going west for the gold rush. He was in his 50s when that happened. <laughs> we love you, John. <laughs> Ironically, here's a picture of John's motorhome. <laughs> yeah, so now to around the web where we get to talk more about John. <laughs> so, speaking of old motorized vehicles, here's one, right? Check this out. This was one of the first RVs in existence. So this is crazy, right? To think that they were just small homes built on a chassis. So think about how ahead of their time they are. They are. Right. That, not only is it a motorhome, but it's a tiny house. Ooh, they combined both. 
that's a combination of the best world. And and you have to you have to open the curtain to drive. You know, you're you have to have a lot of blind spots in this thing when you're driving it down but the how road. But many, how many cars were on the road? There? Probably not that many, but still. 12, 15? Still. <laughs> Hopefully you see a horse and wagon coming yeah. near you. We'll have to ask John. What's the little, it's got like a, it's trying to be aerodynamic right there on the dormer peak over the <laughs> driver's seat. There's a little, there's a, like a little wooden plank right there. Like it's a, it's a wind splitter trying to make it aerodynamic. Yes. You know. It's like it's right there, but it's that's super cool. Lap siding, but you still have to get outside and crank. You have to crank the car to start it. Ooh, you did have to do yes. See, I'm not that old, so I don't. Super cool. Know all that stuff, Tony. I'd camp in it. <laughs> I'd camp in it. <laughs> oh I goodness! That, by the way. So, okay. It wasn't very subtle. I mean, I laid it out there <laughs> for you. <laughs> So, next thing, check out this cake. That, that is super cool. They just put, like, three or four candles to make the fire. Yep. I love it. And imagine if you could replace that tent, though, with, like, a small RV, right? Yeah. And the fact that the cake looks like it's really small. The cake does look pretty small. So, that's one piece that for me. That's one piece for me. And then everybody else has to split up that little cake for themselves. <laughs> or it's one, two pieces, one for you and one for me, and then we just don't tell anybody else. <laughs> Ooh, the cake <laughs> was really good. <laughs> and somehow we always get to talking about pets and we do. the doggos. Mm -hmm. So super cool that Good Housekeeping yeah. posted some pictures. I know I think we've talked about these a little bit before but super cool the little dog houses uh, that yep. look like campers I know I love them that little white what what what's that little white puffy dog right there it's it's cute as a button though I don't know what they're called get out of my yard I'm not like pretty good with dog breeds but I don't I don't know on that one it, it, tell me it doesn't have that look of get out of my yard it does definitely it's I think we've talked about it before, too. I have larger dogs, so none of these, unfortunately, would work for me. Yeah, your fifth wheel works perfectly for exactly. a dog house for your big, giant fur mongers. Yeah. I'm a lover of Great Danes, if you guys didn't know. So, that's what I've got. They're tiny. <laughs> She's all about the tiny dogs. I just have a small horse. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are so many things. We talk to so many people uh, often about why they like to RV why they like to travel. And then you always get the people that go, oh no, I, I want to stay at a hotel. I want da, 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 da. Here's a perfect example of why I'm, I'm out on hotels. I'm out. This is this is a no-go for me. Absolutely not. So I've seen this place on, on a couple television shows mm -hmm. that number one, it's full of clowns, super creepy. Yeah. Number two, it's supposedly haunted. Yep. Yep. Been on several paranormal shows. I've seen those too. So this is a double no-go for me. One, clowns. And two, haunted. The clowns are enough. Like that's an automatic, I'm not going, will not set foot in it. So yeah, I would rather stay in my own camper. I can cook in it. I know I've cleaned it. It doesn't have creepy clowns in it. I'm a fan of my camper. I, I get it completely. So let us ask you this, America. Have any of you taken your RV... And went to any of these paranormal places and done paranormal investigation. That's a good one. Stayed at a campground close to what, Pinehurst or some of these you know, super famous mm -hmm. uh, paranormal sites. My wife keeps talking about that be a great thing for us to do. Yeah. If I heard my name or some strange thing, I'm going to the truck. <laughs> Y'all can stay in here, do what you want to do. Right. I'm going to the truck. I'll yeah. wait on you out there. I'll have a bologna sandwich. I'll, I'll, I'm good. <laughs> See you when you're done. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. So this week for Gadget Corner, we kind of went a little bit of a different route. So rather than sell or not selling, but showing you some high tech gadget or something that you can have for your RV, we kind of just went back to the basics. What are some cool hacks that you can use in your camper? And some of these are things you can recycle from your home, which are pretty cool. 
Yeah, the, the picture here with the, having breakfast pre-made, so making your mm -hmm. uh, pancake or waffle batter in, and then putting it in like a Heinz ketchup. Yep. Uh, I would probably remove the, the label off of it, soak it in a little water, remove the label. <laughs> Or just down a pure meanness, add red food coloring to it. Oh, no. You ever seen the things where the people make all the faces out of the pancakes? Yes. Yes. Super cool. Those people are super talented. Or, okay, we'll go back a little bit. Do you remember when they had the different colored ketchup? Yes. It was like the purple. I couldn't do it. I'm out on that. Yeah. So my favorite thing, and I don't know what it's called. My, my kids call it something. But you mix ketchup and mayonnaise together like 50-50. And then you dip your fries in it yeah. or put it on your hamburgers and stuff like that. It's absolutely fantastic. Really? Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll be brave enough one day. Yeah. But it's, um, we also, we saw some people at a campground a couple of years ago mixed ketchup in one bottle. They mixed ketchup, mustard, and relish all together in one bottle. Mm -hmm. So when they were having hamburgers and hot dogs, Instead of having a ketchup bottle and a mustard bottle and relish and all that other stuff, just in one thing, <laughs> squeeze it out, ready to rock and roll. I mean, I guess it's all going to the same place, but I need separation. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm one of those people. But the next cool thing, these Tic Tac containers, that's pretty cool to store all your spices in. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, and they take up a, a you know, they a don't take up a lot space. of space. Yes. So they're super simple. What you can't do, did you know... That the lid on a Tic Tac canister is designed to dispense one Tic Tac at a time. Oh, really? So if you look, if, if the next time you buy tic, buy some Tic Tacs, if you flip it upside down and pop the lid down, mm -hmm. there's a little thing just in the top of the lid that pops open that goes like that. Yeah. There's a little thing in there that's just big enough to hold a single Tic Tac. Oh. Instead of doing... You know, and then eating whatever you get, which right? is what we really all do. Yeah, we don't follow the one. Exactly. Absolutely. So you can't really do that with the spices, but it's a great idea. Yeah. The next one, if you have any coffee mate containers, are great storage for any of your dry goods, like your cereal, your pretzels, all that stuff, right? Absolutely. It's like one bowl full, though. Yeah. There's not a ton. Not a ton. There's three kids at the empty. So I, I do the majority of the cooking at the campground. Uh -huh. This was something I didn't know about, and I definitely am going to try this. If you take an onion mm -hmm. across the top of your grill, it makes it nonstick. I'm going to try this. You're now not, I'm, just, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, yeah, i, I got to try it. I want to know if it works. i got to try it. And then I suppose once you're done, you can just cut it the rest of the way up and eat yeah. it with yourself. The next one, so an egg carton filled with coals is a great fire starter. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. seen this a couple times, but instead of doing, they cut them. So instead of doing like the, the 12, they break it into groups of four. So then they have three of them mm -hmm. because you're still going to put char, you know, you're still going to put your charcoal in your grill. Right. And then they just use a foursome of the egg carton with a with to use it as a starter so you're not using and it makes it you know you're not using the whole thing all, all at once yeah so then we kind of touched on different condiments so this is another one use a muffin tin to serve all your condiments that's a great idea yeah. too it is so pickles tomatoes onions mayonnaise all that stuff and just put put a, a dollop mm -hmm. boop, 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 and all your things yeah, it's like it says, and you're cutting down on dishwashing. Yeah, makes it super simple. The, the next one was pretty interesting, too. Oh, dryer sheets under your tablecloth to keep these away. I didn't know that was a thing. Doing it. Done. Yeah, I don't, I don't, never heard of it, never tried it. Anybody out there, if you guys have tried that, putting dryer sheets, to, if it works, keeping bees away or anything like that, or if you've got any other cool hacks that you use at the campground, send us some pictures. Yeah. Let us let us know that, that kind of stuff. We like to see that stuff. We, you know, we'll share it with the other people, but you might just be smarter than everybody else, and that, that would be great. <laughs> Industry news. Industry news. So this is a really cool one, guys, because this is something we've also started as a dealership. Keystone is launching a shop-from-home program 
Um, so customers can call, text, and email to request videos of different campers that they've got. We've done the same thing in place with our store as well. You can call us, text us. Email will do a video walkthrough of a coach. It's a nice way for you guys to shop from home. You don't have to get out. Yep. Yep. Absolutely super cool. And we all kind of look like we do the Vanna White. Ooh, look at the covers. <laughs> look at the three burner stove and oven. <laughs> but yeah. wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so super cool, guys. I know I think that's something that you're going to see a lot more, mm -hmm. not just manufacturers, but uh, dealers doing and things like that. You're going to see that a lot more. As, as we all try to live in this new norm and yeah. function in this new norm and so on like that. And, a, and a, a bigger thing is hopefully everybody's staying happy and mentally happy, mm -hmm. mentally healthy, physically healthy, staying at home, enjoying time with loved ones, and getting ready to get out and go camping. Yes, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I, guys, I, I think that kind of brings us to the to the end of episode 12. Mm -hmm. Still more popular than the, the Tiger King. Tell, tell us if Tony's right on that. I want to know. We don't have all the craziness. No, we're a little bit more laid back. Sorry. Guys. I don't think you're on a murder for hire plot against me. No, I don't have that kind of time. Dan. No. <laughs> Dan. We can't get Dan to hand model anything because he has to stay six feet away from us. Yeah. He's ruining the whole show. Dang you, Dan. I think Dan. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, we'll see you next week for episode 13. All right.